Hi everyone and happy Hanukkah. Uh, what is it about Hanukkah? Is it something that's very important, something that Christians need to know about, or is it something that's kind of gone the way since uh, the new covenant has been established? Well, we're going to talk about that tonight. I'd invite you to get your Bible and turn with me into the Gospel of John, John chapter 10. Before we look into that, we just want to talk about what an incredible day we had at the church today. So thankful for the participation and the effort of volunteers to bring about our Christmas program. Tremendous job by our cast and crew today. Wonderful job by the children, as always. We appreciate our children's workers and a lot of fun. I think everyone had a great time. We want to thank you for coming out and supporting it. Hate so badly that we could not live stream today's service. If you weren't able to be there, you missed a real treat. But uh, hopefully we'll get back to our live streaming procedures next Sunday. That is the plan anyhow. So I, again, I thank you for joining me tonight as we live stream this session about Hanukkah. We certainly want to just take a second and talk about what it actually is. What does Hanukkah stand for? Well, we may have heard that it is known as the Festival of Lights, and that's true. It's also known as the Festival of Dedication. And let's talk a little bit about where that came from. Well... It takes place eight consecutive evenings, and it begins tonight, this Sunday night, the 18th of December. Just this year, it'll be a different day next year because of the fact that the Jews traditionally follow the lunar calendar, not the regular calendar that most of the Western world and even the Eastern world in some parts keep themselves uh, abreast of or attuned to. It is part of the lunar calendar, and of course it dealt with their moon festivals and so forth. Uh, if you recall in the book of Genesis, it talks about the evening and the morning being the first day, the evening and the morning being the second day. So that's why they begin their day in the evening, and it goes on, like I said, for eight days. Many of you have seen a menorah, or you know what that looks like. It's usually nine candles, eight of which are lit by one particular candle, that candle used to light the other candles, one per night. Is it still important? Well, I think it's important, and I want to tell you why I think it's important. It gives us a great historical remembrance of something that took place in the Second Temple. About 200 years before Christ, there was an uprising of some Jews who came out against a king of Syria. Now, the king of Syria before this time was Antiochus III, and Antiochus III let the Jews practice their religion as long as they just kind of kept it to themselves. Well, after his son Antiochus Epiphanes came into power, uh, being from Syria, he decided to outlaw and was persuaded to outlaw this practice. So he went in and massacred a number of Jews in Jerusalem, and he desecrated the temple. One way he did that was that he uh, actually had pigs sacrificed on the altar there. He set up a statue of Zeus, which was a Greek king at the time. Syria and Greece were sort of intermingled, if you will. I don't want to get into too much of that history because, frankly, there's some of it I don't really understand. But nevertheless, there was a group of Jews who revolted against Antiochus Epiphanes. Many people believe Antiochus Epiphanes to be a forerunner of what the Antichrist will be like. So if you look up in your history, you can look in Josephus and some other writers. They will give you an, an idea of this Antiochus Epiphanes character and how he very well may be a forerunner of what the Antichrist will be in the end times. Now, this uprising by these Jews was led by a group that was known as the Maccabees. It's, it's called the Maccabean Revolt. And they went in and, in a small number, overpowered the Greeks and the Syrians who had overrun the temple and had desecrated it. They found enough oil, and I guess you could say blessed oil, sacred oil, to burn for one night and miraculously, according to Jewish legend, it was able to maintain the light in the temple for eight consecutive nights. That is why they celebrate it. That's why, and during this process, they rededicated the temple. They buried some of the uh, stones that were desecrated, or you know, and, and they rebuilt the temple altar and so forth. So it was a big event. And in the rededication of the temple, that's how they celebrated Hanukkah, or it came to be known as the Feast of Dedication, Rededication. 
It's also the festival of lights, emphasizing the lighting of the menorah, one candle each night. Was it a big deal to the Hebrews? Well, it's not a major holiday. They don't usually purchase gifts and exchange them. It's not something that they go out and buy commercial gifts, but there is a celebration and it's passed down. Is it important that we know this, that we understand this today? I think it's very important. I want to tell you why I think it's so important. Um, today, I was watching a little bit of television, and Jesus of Nazareth happened to come on. Many of you know that old film. It has Robert Powell in it. He plays Jesus. He's a British actor, does an incredible job, but you may be more familiar with Greatest Story Ever Told. You may be familiar with King of Kings, uh, the Jeffrey Hunter version, what have you, uh, all kinds of versions of the Bible. Now, the reason I bring this up is because there is a big movement today among contemporaries that uh, in the educational offices and, and in the, uh, I don't want to pick on colleges, but, but particularly in, in uh, academia, that condemns interpretation of the bi biblical narrative in which a white actor plays Jesus. Now, I don't see any problem with an actor playing Jesus, whether he's white or black, whether he's Jewish or Gentile. I don't see any issue with that as long as they're spreading the gospel. The thing, though, that I want to emphasize to you tonight is if this took place in the second century before Christ, it means more than likely that Jesus celebrated Hanukkah because it reminds us that our Savior was a Jew while he was here on earth. He is from Jewish origin. He is from the lineage of David. And the scriptures even tell us that he was in the temple while the feast of Hanukkah was taking place. It's in the gospel of John, beginning with verse 22. It says, then came the festival of dedication. And you probably have a little asterisk there in your Bible that if you look down at the bottom of the page, it says Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews who were there gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. What does this tell us tonight? It says Jesus was at the temple during the celebration of Hanukkah. More than likely, he, being a Jew, was celebrating the same festival of lights that the Jews continue to celebrate today. I think it's very important. We never separate Jesus from his Jewish heritage. We recognize it, we appreciate it, but we also understand that he did not just come to die for the Jewish nation. The Bible tells us that he came to his own first, but they received him not. He also died for every living soul that was Gentile as well. Christmas has kind of come out, become the Gentile celebration, but I think it's very important tonight that we pay respect to the Festival of Lights, to Hanukkah, and to our Jewish friends who continue to celebrate that. Let's have some knowledge about them, because by knowing them and their history better, we have a greater chance of winning them to salvation through the Messiah. Let's pray together. Almighty God, I thank you for the reality that Christ has come. We celebrate that in our Christmas festival. And Lord, there were other festivals that were important to your people. We acknowledge them tonight. We take a moment, step back, and say we love our Jewish friends and neighbors, and we also highlight the reality that Jesus himself came as a Jew, celebrated the Passover, celebrated Hanukkah, the Feast of Booths, the Feast of Tabernacles. He celebrated the fall festivals, if you will. And we want to recognize him for who he was and now who he is, the Savior of the world. We thank you for his fabulous sacrifice that he gave his life for everyone, Jew and Gentile alike, so that we might be one, one family, united in Christ Jesus for all eternity. It's our prayer tonight that we will see that come to pass. We also pray tonight, Father, for the many in our congregations that seek revival and the many in our congregations that want to see it occur in the new year. May it begin in our hearts tonight and carry us through the Christmas season. Also, Father, tonight, 
We pray especially for those who are sick or hurting or going through painful moments during this Christmas and holiday season. We pray that you would bring them good health, that you would restore them, comfort them, and help them also to plan and enjoy a great season. A season of worship. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you. I hope you have an incredible week, a wonderful Christmas week. Join Crystal and I on Thursday night for Carry Hope Ministries, Lord willing, as we continue to look at the Christmas story. I believe we're going to be talking about the wise men. And then on Saturday night, we're going to have a candlelight drop-in communion service at our old chapel at Gold Hill Wesleyan. You're invited to come between 6 and 7 and stay as long as you like. I will be there to serve communion. Hope you can make it for this very special service. And then Sunday at 10 o'clock, worship only for Christmas Day. Hope you plan to be with us. May God bless you. Again, have a great week, everyone.